Rowing can take many forms in college, from varsity Division I national contending boats to club programs which you can walk onto to everything in between. College rowing can be a major part of your college experience or be a fun extracurricular activity. What do you want out of rowing in college? First, you must investigate different crew programs and what they have to offer you. Evaluate what you want from rowing. An admissions hook, scholarship, competitive team, or just love rowing and don't want to stop. Find out other factors, like how much time is spent practicing, their division, how busy is the team schedule, how much travel, what are the training expectations during and after the season, how big is the program, what is their record, do you want to be on a top team even if you never get in the top boat? Would you rather be a top rower on a less competitive team? Do you want time for other activities? Basically, what percentage of your college experience do you want to dedicate to rowing? These questions may help you narrow down the program that is right for you. First, let's give a little basic information about college rowing. Open weight women's rowing is an NCAA sanctioned sport where men's rowing and women's lightweight rowing are not. That being said, most men's and women's lightweight programs adhere to the same rules as their NCAA counterpart. So as far as recruiting guidelines and training schedules, they are pretty much the same. For scholarships though, open weight women have a lot more opportunities. Probably one of the most discussed and confusing aspects of recruiting is the ERG and its value in the process. One way to look at it is it's part of your resume. It gets you in the door. But almost every coach says it's just one factor. Well, obviously the easiest way to initially identify somebody, uh, a high school rower, is off of the ERG. You know, obviously there's so much more to you as a rower than your ERG score, but it's a way to just say like, here, like here's a flag, like, hello, I'm here, this is how fast I am, take a look at me. But not all ERG scores are the same. We've recruited uh, high school rowers that are sub 650 on the ERG and high school rowers that have never ERG before. It's an important factor, it's not the most important factor. The ERG's big if the ERG score is big. So it's like if someone is going like seven minutes or under or just around that as a, as a junior in high school, that's huge. So that would play very big for those people. More than anything, it's kind of a foot in the door. The common question is, what are the particular ERG scores needed to be an attractive candidate? One of the most important traits is definitely, are they looking for that next step? So when a recruit says to me, you know, what ERG score do I need to get in order to be recruited? I, I don't usually give them a number. It's, you just need to keep improving. Do they have the ability to continue to get better? You know, if they're stuck on a certain score, then, and they're not, never, haven't moved for two years, that's not somebody that we're looking for. We're looking for somebody that even though they're not as fast as that person that's stuck, we feel that they're gonna get better and better and better, then that's the type of kid we want. So where can I row in college, you may be asking. It is important to know your GPA, SAT, ACT, and ERG scores. You must be academically admissible as well as athletically to be considered by a coach. Long before you apply, a coach may ask you to have your high school send your transcripts, profile, and either SAT or ACT score to the athletic or admissions department. This is called a pre-read. We do a pre-application where we, we get their transcripts and SATs and counselor's name and number and their senior year courses, things like that, and we send it over to admissions and they'll tell us admissible or not. Let's break down the various levels of rowing in college. Rowing at the varsity division one level is an extreme commitment on both the men's and women's sides. Expect more training with more intense and sophisticated practices than you are currently doing. Expect to spend a lot of time in the gym and on the ERG. Your ERG volume might double or even triple from what you did in high school. Division I programs train year-round and are allowed 20 hours per week of practice time in season. Most programs have excellent facilities, sports training staff, and a lot of resources for keeping athletes healthy. Varsity coaches have distinct personalities and run their programs differently. Every varsity program has a unique flavor. Find out about the culture and the system the program uses. Find out what the flavor is before you commit to the team and enroll at that university. The unfortunate part is a lot of athletes quit because they don't realize what they got themselves into. Varsity rowing is very tough and you've got to be a good fit. You have to love it and thrive in that environment. Rowing at the Division II or III level are mostly women's programs. At the Division II level, there are athletic scholarships, but it's less common to find a full athletic scholarship. 
Many coaches divvy up their allotment of scholarships into smaller parcels and reward multiple athletes. The focus at the D2 level is a balance between academics and athletics. At the Division III level, there are no athletically related scholarships, and the focus is squarely on academics for admission. And that's by virtue of the entire NESCAC, the New England Small College Athletic Conference, right? Like everybody within that group has agreed to a very limited number of people that will be admitted because of athletic factors. It is important to note that at the D2 and D3 levels, there are shorter seasons and they are not allowed to officially practice out of season. I think the biggest difference is how much official time that we can practice. So the coaching influence in Division Three is limited to 19 weeks of total rowing, um, usually about eight weeks in the fall and 11 weeks in the spring. And there's a coaching moratorium that is put into place at the beginning of November that runs until February 22nd. Thus, less practice time than Division I. That doesn't mean that Division II or Division III programs aren't very competitive and rigorous in training. So don't fool yourself into thinking that it's an easier or less competitive situation. Also, D2 or D3 schools are usually smaller and might not have the same level of facilities as a D1 program. Be sure to ask about the training staff, the athletic facilities, and what resources are available for the rowing team. The High School General Timeline. In your freshman year, you should concentrate on developing your rowing skills. If possible, work on both sculling and sweeping. Practice rowing on both sides, building endurance and strength. It is also very important to work on your academics. Get a strong GPA out of the gate. Your sophomore year, you should start concentrating on improving your 2K ERG score. Create a racing portfolio. Start visiting and researching colleges. Find out their academic requirements. Continue concentrating on your high school academics and building a strong GPA. Register with the NCAA Eligibility Center at eligibilitycenter.org. Your junior year is when you actively start your recruiting process. This is when college coaches can officially start talking to you and offering official visits. This is when you should start reaching out to them and filling out recruiting questionnaires. Because this is the time when you are reaching out to coaches, you want to make sure your ERG score and GPA are at their best. Make a good first impression. Your senior year is when you make your decision. Particularly during the fall of your senior year, update coaches, continue or start your official visits, and submit your college applications. And then, once you've heard back from schools, make your final decision. Before applying to an NCAA Division I or Division II school, you need to be certified by the NCAA Eligibility Center. You need to create a certification account on the NCAA website to make official visits and to sign a national letter of intent. Many men's and women's lightweight programs also use this as a benchmark, so it is best to do this early in the process, even if you're not sure where you want to row in college. Sometimes we'll identify rowers um, just by watching a race or just by going out to a practice. Sometimes we'll identify rowers because a coach will say, hey, look at this kid. Making initial contact with a coach. It is best to reach out by email. Recruiting is a formal process, so make sure you proofread. Keep it professional. Address as coach, mister, or ms. Let them know who you are as an athlete and a student. Include your height, weight, the program where you are currently rowing, your ERG score, whether you sweep and or skull, and how long you've been rowing. Give them your academic information, such as your GPA, weighted or unweighted, and your ACT or SAT scores. Give them a basic snapshot of who you are and whether you'd be a good fit for their program. Meeting with a coach. When meeting with a coach, present yourself in the best possible light. Be confident and humble, be polite and courteous. Do your research. Know about the school and why you are interested in rowing there. Do you know about Berkeley? Are you interested in Berkeley? Uh, why are you interested in Berkeley? Then ask those questions that you want to know about the program that aren't easily available on their website. Differentiate yourself and talk only about what you have accomplished, not your projected outcomes. At the end of the day, if this is the school where you end up, this coach and program will have a huge effect on your life for four years. Make sure you want to be there. 
Understand that from a coach's perspective, their top priority is winning championships. It's not giving you a scholarship, aid, or helping you with admissions. They have limited recruiting resources, limited scholarships, and spots. So sell yourself on how you can help their program succeed. I'm really looking for people that have character because when you have character, when you have that kind of that work ethic and just a good person character with a lot of integrity, then it allows us as coaches to get the most out of you and to help you achieve what you want to achieve. Follow up with coaches after your meetings. Continue to show interest in their program and update them on your significant rowing and academic accomplishments. Stay top of mind. And then hopefully we can go out and watch them row, go out and watch them race and see if they're pulling hard. And if they are, great, and uh, talk to the coach. Official visits are the time for you to get to know a program and see if it's a good fit. It is also a good way for coaches and the team to see if you are a good fit for them as well. NCAA rules allow athletes to take up to five official visits. Which is when the teams uh, pay for you to come out and look at their program and their school. Getting to know the person is the most important thing for us recruiting. Coming here for an official visit. You stay with a rower and you see what life would really look like as a student athlete at the school you're looking at. The official visit is a two-way process. They're checking us out and we're checking them out. On an official visit, an athlete will visit a college campus for a 48-hour period. All expenses are picked up by the university and the NCAA. You will stay with someone on the team in their dorm, go to practice, classes, and basically experience what college is like for a rower at that college. Like the rest of the process, it is extremely important that you maintain a professional attitude on an official visit. Have fun, be yourself, but remember, you are still on an interview and they are watching and judging you as you are the school and the program. Scholarships. Not everyone receives athletic scholarships. They are very competitive. Sometimes they are awarded after you're on the team. There are merit scholarships, financial aid, and or admissions support. Do not talk about scholarships on initial meetings with coaches. You can find out a lot of the basic information online or through your high school coach and teammates. Once you see you are a good fit for a program and scholarship opportunities will affect your decision-making process, then start asking about them. If you are fortunate enough to be offered a spot on a team, there are multiple ways this will transpire. Generally, offers are made during official visits. A coach will either make a verbal commitment or present some kind of written document. For schools with scholarships, along with your admission, the amount of scholarship awarded will be given at this time. For the most part, when we offer a scholarship, like yes, and this will be the scholarship for four years. If you are receiving a spot at an Ivy League school, you will be getting a likely letter that states you are likely to be admitted into the program. The Ivy League offers no athletic scholarships. So, you know, we can offer admission in um, different places. So, you know, and we have a certain number of admission um, slots that we can use to, to help people help people come. A likely letter is a early notification that it is likely that you'll be admitted. The way that works is you have to have your application completed in full, a normal application, and then the admissions office will pull your application early and read it before the deadline. They will issue a letter that says it is likely that you will be admitted. It is not a 100% guarantee, it's a 99% guarantee. They reserve the right to revoke it if you do something completely out of character. It allows athletes who are being offered a scholarship from a scholarship institution and what may prefer to take a reach out an Ivy and don't want to give up that scholarship. This allows the Ivy to read it early, give them an early read, yes or no, and then they can turn around and either continue with the scholarship school or say, I'm all set, thank you. Other non-Ivy League programs have similar notification letters. In general, across Division One. Everybody has a certain type of preferential, sure. you know, um, or conditional acceptance that they can that they can help generate. It is very important to remember, no matter how fast a rower you are and how much the coach wants you, it is the admissions department that ultimately accepts you into college. The coach may have a certain number of scholarships or likely letters, but they are all given by the admissions department. Until you get an official letter from the admissions department stating that you've gotten into the school, you are not officially admitted. If you get a likely letter in the early round, you'll receive the letter and you'll hold on to it. And then on 
the no notification date of the early round. Here it's around December 15th. You log onto the computer and you'll get your official admit. Rowing is a fantastic sport that you can do for the rest of your life. How competitive you want to be is totally up to you. When choosing what type of program and school you want, make sure you look at the big picture. It's a family decision. It's no longer, you know, oh, you know, like any college is good. It really is like this is an investment, a significant investment that's going to change my life. So we've got to do a good job of, of finding out whether or not it fits. The last thing we want to do is bring somebody on campus who doesn't thrive, right? That's a loss for them and a loss for us. You are not going to college to become a professional rower. Make sure the college is right for you. Would you be happy at that school even if you couldn't row? That being said, if you are choosing a competitive program, realize a lot of your college experience will be through rowing, so make sure you also like the culture of the team as well as the university. It is a big decision, but don't get overwhelmed. It will all work out. Trust your gut and be true to yourself.